Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Hindu's Bio Neat. You're here with me today on a very important session of Biology Important Lecture Series 1. Not only for Neat, Ames, and Jipma, but this particular lecture on Scientist of the World of Cell Biology, all in a single roof, all at a glance, is going to be a great. Thing where we are going to recollect all the scientists of cell biology in a single roof which is going to be very easy for us to remember at a glance. So it's going to be a very important lecture, kindly pay attention and for more and more MCQs and biology made easy lectures, please do subscribe. I hope you remember in yesterday lecture, I have already mentioned about it that I am going to come out with some great lecture today. Before we start the lecture. Very happy Children's Day. Today's children are tomorrow's nation's pride and children of today are leaders of tomorrow. So my dear children, the basic aim of bringing out this particular video today is that I'm sure that all of us are aiming to become a future doctor, right? You are working for it and I'm sure most of you would achieve your target. But for some of you who couldn't achieve it, this is going to be a great inspirational video as well because all those who have not got into MBBS or couldn't become doctor can become scientist. It's equally a great profession as that of doctors. So seeing the great scientist list, if not doctor, let's become a doctorate holder. So seeing the great list of scientists, their discoveries all in a roof will not only help you in exam, but I'm sure it's going to create a sort of inspiration to achieve something for our mother, India, serve the nation. Thank you so much. Let's get started up. Yes, scientists and discoveries at a glance, all scientists involved in cell biology. Here, Robert Hooke in the year 1665 discovered the cell for the first time. This is how the cell biology world started up. Yes, Sclidon in 1838 applied cell theory to plants. Schwann in 1839 applied cell theory to animals. He also discovered plasma membrane in 1836. Malfigian grew in 1671 and 82 respectively observed the live cells in plants. Anton van Leeuwenhoek in 1674 observed the first living animal cell. This is how the story continued and Robert Brown discovered the nucleus in 1831. The cell theory was slightly modified by Rudolf Virchow in 1855 and he proposed the modern cell theory. Nagelian Kramer was a scientist who coined the term cell membrane in 1855. Plow in 1931 coined the term plasma memma. In 1772, the first living matter in the cell was observed by Alfonso Cortat. Bujardin in 1835 named this living matter in cell as sarcode. Perkinji in 1839 coined the term protoplasm. Schultz in 1861 established similarities between sarcode and protoplasm. And finally it was Hertwig in 1892 came out with protoplasmic theory. And between this period Huxley in 1868 described protoplasm as physical basis of life. So this is all about the story of protoplasm. Let's get into further discoveries. It was Sanger. Sanger's sequence is so famous. In 1954 gave the first complete structure of protein. It was Nirenberg, Corona and Holly studied the genetic code in 1958. Discovered the base sequence of TRNA. Singer and Nicholson proposed the fluid mosaic model 
widely accepted model even today is fluid mosaic model of plasma membrane Khurana synthesized gene artificially from DNA nucleotides in 1970 Although fluid mosaic model was widely accepted today we also had different proposals by different scientists regarding the structure of plasma membrane as follows Daniel and Davison in 1935 gave the unit membrane model and slightly modified by Robertson in 1959 he said it is protein lipid lipid and protein that is the structure but the story started in 1900s overton said the plasma membrane is nothing but a thin layer of lipids then gorter and grendel in 1926 said that they are composed of double layer of lipid molecule and then gave daniele davison robertson and now fluid mosaic model is the widely accepted model so this is the world of plasma membrane coming to cytoplasm colicker in 1863 gave the term cytoplasm the feeder in 1890 distinction between ectoplasm and endoplasm fisher in 1986 gave the colloidal nature of cytoplasm but it was strasburger or colica in 1863 gave the term cytoplasm hackel discovered plastids in 1865 and we all know that tna is a genetic material which was actually confirmed with experimental proof by Hershey and Chase in 1952 but this confirmation was started because of the experiment that was put forward by Griffith in 1928 the bacterial transformation in mice model using streptococcus right and every mcleod mccarthy also contributed to this study so this is how the discoveries continued the cell biology world became so famous scientists started discovering more and more all about cell altman in 1886 named mitochondria as bioblast he also gave the term nucleic acid for nuclein the name given by frederick nisher porter and kalman gave the term endoplasmic reticulum in the year 1933 Malet discovered ribosomes in 1955. Strasburger in 1875 observed mitosis for the first time. Observed chromosome for the first time. Tissot and Sato in 1959 discovered nuclear ribosomes. It was Porter, Claude, and Fulham in 1945 observed endoplasmic reticulum for the first time. Porter and Kalman in 1933 gave the term endoplasmic reticulum. It was Watson, Crick, and Wilkins in 1953 demonstrated double helical model for DNA. It was Robinson and Brown who discovered ribosomes in plant cell, and it was Palade who discovered ribosomes in animal cell in the year 1955. It was Collicker in 1857 who observed mitochondria, and the term mitochondria was given by Benda in 1898. De Robertis and Franco in 1950s observed the structure of microtubule. It was Nas, Nas, and Abzelius in the year 1965 showed the presence of DNA in mitochondria. It was Moran and Kendry who discovered the oxisome particles or F1 if not particles. Von Benden in 1888 discovered the centriole, but the name centriole was given by Boveri. Hope it's all clear. The list goes on and on. Let's continue. Ris and Plot. in 1962 showed the presence of dna in chloroplast it was camillo golgi in 1898 who described golgi bodies 
Christian D. Duve in 1955 discovered lysosomes. In 1965 discovered peroxisomes. Joseph Hanstein who observed the spherosome in 1880 and Boveri observed and discovered centrosome in 1888. Let's proceed. Alec Jeffrey in 1984 discovered DNA fingerprinting technology. It was Bradian back and B was in 1967. Discovered the glyoxisomes from the extract of endosperms of germinating castor seeds. Slaughterback gave the term microtubule in 1963. Fleming gave the term mitosis in 1882. The term nucleoplasm was given by Van Beneden and the term karyoplasm was given by Fleming in 1875 and 1878 respectively. Waldeyer in 1888 gave the name chromosome. But it was discovered in 1872 by Hofmeister. Francis in 1966 discovered Piraus, cancer producing virus. That is how it was called as Rouse sarcoma. Talbert in 1969 described the role of peroxisomes in photorespiration. And it was Spallanzani in the year 1842 described vacuoles in plant cell few more list and this is the end of session Schwarzberger was also the person in 1882 who gave the term nucleoplasm and we all know that nucleolus was discovered by Fontana but the term nucleolus was given by Bauman or dead in 1975 gave the term nucleosome and we all know there are two types of chromosomes discovered polytene chromosome and Lambrecht chromosome finally the last scientist of today's session polytene chromosome was discovered by Balbani and Chironis in 1881 and it was Lambrecht chromosome which was discovered by Ruket in 1892 with this, we really, really come to the end of this exhaustive session of scientists and their discovery at a glance. I'm sure this would be of great use to all the cell biology students and basic biology students who are going to give need because cell biology is something very important and Knowing the scientist and their discovery is even more important in any exam. So when it comes to the scientist and discovery, making a note of it in all at a roof and keeping in mind, reading it again and again and trying to recollect is more important. So I've tried my best to collect all informations in a single roof. Please subscribe to get such more videos of biology made easy lecture sessions and thank you for your cooperation kindly like the channel and please do share with your friends so that many more students would be benefited thank you so much all the very best my best wishes to all your goal path career path and hope all your vision will come true soon good luck good night See you again with next set of MCQs as per the schedule. Thank you.